So good afternoon, everyone. We are live now. Good afternoon, one and all, on behalf of Kim's Dio Technical Team. Welcome you to webinar on differential diagnosis for low back pain. We are IAP India YouTube page. So please uh, subscribe to this page to get register to get regular notification of webinars. Now I request Dr. Pushbu to take over. Thank you, Dr. Trupti. We welcome you all to this webinar on differential diagnosis for low back pain. This is our webinar seven of the series, and this is the last day, that is day four of our webinar. This yeah. webinar series is jointly organized by IP Women's Health Satara District Maharashtra in collaboration with Krishna College of Physiotherapy, Karar. I would like to introduce IP Women's Health which was started on 30th of May, 2018. It functions under the guidance of national head, Dr. Ruchi Varshne, and IP president executive, Dr. Sanjeev Jha. IP Women's Health works towards conducting public awareness camps, CME workshops. It aims at bringing together all physiotherapy professionals for sharing knowledge and improving public awareness about physiotherapy. We have five zones in India with the heads for each. Dr. Pooja Kamble is the West Zone Head. The state team of IP Women's Health Maharashtra includes the state coordinator as Dr. Suvar Nagandi, joint coordinator as Dr. Snehal Patel, sub coordinators as Dr. Uttara Mohan, Dr. Priya Karande, and Dr. Nirali Sangvi. In Maharashtra, IP Women's Health has conducted 40 plus low cost activities in various districts and pre webinars in the first few months. In the first IP conference, which was held in Indore in April 2019, Maharashtra State received the award for the best state IP women's cell. I would also like to introduce the district team of Satara, which was established on 31st of January 2019 with a team of three members. Dr. Tupti Yadav as the coordinator and assistant professor at Krishna College of Physiotherapy. Myself, Dr. Kushbu Chotai, as sub-coordinator and assistant professor at Krishna College of Physiotherapy, and Dr. Pallavi Kulkarni as the sub-coordinator. I would also like to introduce Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences, deemed to be university, which was established by the visionary founder and chairman and honorable chancellor, late Sri Jaivant Rauji Bosley, our beloved Appasar. Presently, the university is flourishing under the guidance of honorable chancellor, Dr. Suresh Bosley, Honorable Pro-Chancellor, Dr. Praveen Shingare, Honorable Principal Advisor, Dr. Ved Prakash Mishra, Honorable Vice-Chancellor, Dr. Mrs. Neelam Mishra, and Respected Registrar, Dr. M. V. Ghurpade. University currently has undergraduate, postgraduate, and super speciality in various disciplines such as medical, dental, physiotherapy, nursing, allied health, and pharmacy. It is a host to 5,000 plus students on the environment friendly campus. It has complex. College of Physiotherapy started initially under MUHS in the year 2002. And in the year 2005-06, the university achieved its dream status. It currently has undergraduate, postgraduate, and interdisciplinary PhD programs. College is headed by Dr. G. Varad Rajulu from its inception. Krishna College of Physiotherapy is a pioneer institution in Maharashtra, with all the facility as for the norms of IP and Maharashtra State OTPT Council. I would now request Dr. G. Vardhrajulu to introduce our speaker, Dr. R. Raja. Yeah, very good afternoon, one and all. A warm welcome to all the participants for this uh, uh, last lecture of this webinar series conducted by, jointly conducted by Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences and the Satara District Women's Cell of Physiotherapy. So, for today's lecture, we have an eminent uh, speaker, resource person from Karnataka, by name called Dr. R. Raja, who is a professor and principal at Campekoda Institute of uh, Physiotherapy, Bangalore. 
sir is a graduated from yeah to be in brief sir is a meritorious student throughout his career meritorious student meritorious teacher meritorious professor meritorious meritorious principal he is a kk nagar government college of vidrp student uh, during his ug time and pg he has done at uh, savita dental college i mean savita vidrp college chennai awarded in 2018 the phd at in, uh, in nitte university mangalore and uh, sir is served almost in all the categories of vidrp profession starting from lecturer associate professor professor and principal vice principal you name any any uh, category in our field he has served in that sir has got a tremendous experience in clinical as well as in teaching administration sir has published many articles in many scopus index journals sir has presented papers in many scientific uh, forums guided more than 25 mpt students he has organized he is very much famous in south india for organizing the conferences when he was under his leadership in chennai he has organized a well known conference called stride stride 95 stride 98 stride 2002 people in chennai recognized him by by the organizing chairman of this particular uh, conferences that he has organized in that particular state so sir has organized workshops he has attended more than 100 in his study he is a ugc state university inspector for various colleges across the country he is a he is a uh, he is involved in services for more than 14 universities across the country to name few starting from krishna institute of medical science at gmd university tamil nadu dr m jr medical university annamalai university ntr university rajiv gandhi swims university He, almost all that deemed to be universities in the south and up to the maharashtra he is taking part in guiding the uh, board of studies guiding the academic council his contribution is enormous in all these 14 universities so we are really proud and pleasure to have dr raja for, for this uh, particular guest lecture which is a, a very important uh, which is on very important topic of differential diagnosis for low back pain so this topic uh, that has been uh, taught by me the reason is there are if, when a, when a patient comes to your department and uh, with a with a complaint of low back pain student uh, especially the undergraduate and the interns and the pgs they get confused with the diagnosis what type of what is exactly problem and what is appropriate treatment that can be decided uh, to this particular patient so that is why i thought of at least this particular topic will be definitely going to be useful for the undergraduate interns and the pgs of course for a junior physiotherapist also so with this brief introduction i will once again welcome on behalf of the indian association of physiotherapy and christian institute of medical sciences gym to university for uh, to dr raja for delivering his lecture on differential diagnosis for low back pain over to you dr raja sir over dr raja sir dr raja sir dr raja sir you are audible dr raja sir thank you sir yeah 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 thank you sir i am audible to all yes sir yes sir hello hello can you audible sir, i am audible to you yes yeah. sir yes thank sir you. thank you sir thank you thank you yeah very good afternoon one and all it is my pleasure to be a part of uh, your university webinar uh, series person first of all i would like to thank uh, dr mudrajulu sir the dean uh, krishna institute of physiotherapy and the deemed in deemed uh, kids Uh, deemed to be an university karat because i am associated with this university uh, i can say more than a decade so i would like to thank the university officials and the dean next i would like to extend my warm thanks to the 
Satara women cell IAP people, Kushbu Madam, and uh, the other two madams, even I am associated with your people since long time. I am very proud to be for this honor given by your people. So, uh, in today's lecture, I am going to speak about the uh, low back pain and its differential diagnosis. Let me share my uh, slide. Before let me start my lecture, I request the audience to mute your phone because if you unmute, then it will be a lot of uh, echoing, so you cannot hear my voice very clearly. Let me start my lecture. It is differential diagnosis for low back pain. The introduction for uh, the low back pain, right? Most of the Indian population or the population worldwide will experience the low back pain in their life at any one particular point. At particular point in sense, their, their age ranges between 35 years to 60 years. And if you consider the age, then we have to consider the sex also. If you consider the sex, both male and female patients are highly prone to get the low back pain. Percentage wise population, out of which the 60 percentage of the general population are affected by low back pain, then 80 percentage of industrial population are also affected and 20 percentage of the sports personal population are also affected by low back pain. If you consider the patient who is suffering with low back pain, right, where the pain may be there for minimum two to three months. So any treatment for the low back pain or the treatment by the physiotherapist we with the patient where the patient will be all right by one or two months time duration. That is why in physiotherapy, if you consider, right, the one course of the treatment consisting of 10 days of treatment and it varies from university to university and hospital to hospital. If you consider the low back pain patients with the physiotherapy treatment along with the medications, the patient will be all right by two to three months. And also, uh, the if you consider the 80% of the population in general all over the globe are suffering with low back pain in the age group between 35 to 60 years. Let me skip to the second slide. Yeah, I'm going to speak about the anatomy of the disc, right? Disc is the main component where uh, there is a the problem. That problem may lead to the low back pain. If you consider the anatomy of the disc, this contains the water, collagen, and proteoglycates. It works as a shock absorber. Whenever we do the any sort of movement, whenever we do any sort of movement like sitting, standing, right where we can see the compression sort of movement and the flexion, the rotatory movement, any sort of the physical activity is allowed by the disc, and the disc is acting as a shock absorber whenever we perform the physical activity. Then the other important point in the disc is it occupies, if you consider the vertebral column of the human body, we have the 33 vertebras, right? If you consider the vertebral column as a log, in that the 25 to 33 percentage of the uh, space is occupied by the disc in the vertebral column. Next, let me speak about the component of the disc. The disc consists of the nucleus composes as the center area. Then the annular fibrosis, which is encovering or encircling the nucleus fibrosis and the vertebral end plates. Then let me speak about the pathology of the uh, lumbar vertebra or the disc. If you consider the main pathology, which is considered in the lumbar region, or if you consider in the cervical region, 
The main problem is the disc collapse. How the disc collapse may happen? The disc collapse may happen, it is due to protrusion or extrusion of nucleus pulposus through the annular fibrosis. If you consider in that way, which are all the common sites for the disc collapse? If you consider the common site at the lumbar region, it is L4 and L5, and if you consider at cervical region, it is C4 and C5. Why these two regions are very common for the disc collapse? No, so these two regions, or if you consider this vertebra, have more mobility than comparing with the adjacent vertebrae. If you do consider whenever there is the mobility, whenever there is the maximum movement, there are chances of wear and tear. Right? If you take it in that sense, the L4, L5 at lumbar region and C4, C5 at cervical region plus or minus one vertebra, where there are much of the movement which induces the wear and tear there, which in turn leads to the disc collapse. Right? Such a way the patient is suffering with the disc collapse. If we consider the prolapse of the disc, which are all the common sites of the prolapse we can see or we can say. If we consider in general, most of the population will have the posterior lateral prolapse. That is very, very commonly seen and there are a lot of literature supporting research literatures are there. Then if you consider out of 40 to 50 percentage, there, there will be the lateral prolapse which can be seen and very, very rarely, I can say 5 to 10 percentage, where there is the anterior collapse which are seen in the disc. Explain about the type of the uh, disc pathology. If we consider the type, the first type, which is called as the self contained disc lesion. The self contained disc lesion means there is the disc problem, but there won't be any bursting or there won't be any protrusion extrusion. Right, and there will be increased distal pressure, right, which is called as the self contained disc lesion. And the second type, which is called as the disc lesion with nuclear extrusion. If you consider the nuclear extrusion, there will be the increased distal pressure, which is the nucleus pulposus pressure due to the excess movement at L4, L5, or if you consider the cervical region, C4 and C5. Because of the repeated motion, the nucleus pulposus, which may burst out and, and which may make the way through the annular fibrosis and which protrude out or extrude out, and there are chances of compressing the nerve pathway, right? That is called as the second type of the lesion. Now, let me, let me skip to the third, so fourth slide, where I'm going to speak about the herniated lumbar disc. As we saw in the previous slide, right? The disc, how it can be affected, right? The affected disc, which is called as the herniated disc. So, in this topic, today I'm going to speak about only the low back pain, which is absolutely related to lumbar disc, that is L1 to L5, right? If you consider the herniated lumbar disc, the herniated nucleus pulposus can be seen, right? So, whenever there is the herniated disc, there are chances of the sciatic symptom. As, as we all will familiar about the sciatic symptom and the sciatic pain, where the patient will be complaining of pain from the back region starting from the gluteal bone or gluteal region, and it may extend till the toes or till the calf region or till the thigh region or till the knee region. It depends upon the amount of the compression and the sciatic nerve. From the root level. For this, what are all the things the special test we used to do to check out or to rule out the disc collapse? The first test what we used to do is the straight leg raising, which is called as the SLR. SLR will guide us towards the disc collapse. Then the second test, which is called as the Lazarus test, even the Lazarus will guide us towards the disc collapse. And the third one is the slump test. As we all well familiar how to perform the slump test, the fourth one is the bowstring test, and the fifth one is the Valsalva. Right? Whenever we perform the Valsalva, where we instruct the patient to take the breath hold and hold the breath for the longer time and compressing the nostrils, 
where the patient is to try to tend to do the expiration where the air should not pass out through nostrils. So what will happen when we perform this maneuver? So there are chances of increased intrathoracic, intrapleural, and intraabdominal pressure. Through that, there are chances of increasing intraspinal canal pressure. Whenever there are chances of the lesion inside the spinal canal or in the nerve root, right? In that particular case, as a physio, we have to perform the Valsalva maneuver. This Valsalva maneuver will guide us towards the distal. Next, let me explain about the stages of the disc prolapse. If you consider the first stage of the disc prolapse, which is called as the stage of degeneration. In the stage of degeneration, you can see there won't be any bulging, but there will be increased viscal pressure due to excess motion of the above and below vertebrae. Second stage, which is called as the stage of intrusion, where we can see there will be the just a bulge, where we can see the bulging of the nucleus pulposis. This bulging will start compressing the adenoid fibrosis. Then the stage three, which is called as the stage of extrusion. In the stage of extrusion, we can see the diagram, which is nothing but out but in contact. The central nucleus pulposis is torn off from its position and which is compressing, which is making way through the anterior fibrosis and which is start uh, extruding from its original position. Then the fourth stage, we used to call it as the sequestration stage. We are out, but there is no contact, which is totally out or three fourths of the part, which is out from its coordinate position and which is start uh, compressing the nerve pathway where patient used to give complaint of the numbness or they used to say like the burning pain from the foot or the leg push. Then the fifth stage, which is called as the stage of fibrosis, right? When the patient reaches the stage three, four, and five, where the patient is directed to the uh, neurologist or neurosurgeon opinion, along with their opinion, the patient has to be directed for the surgeon. But if you consider, according to our experience, we can manage the patient up to stage one, two, and three. But when the stage is four, where there is no thorough compression, but there is the disc collapse. In that case, we can maintain the condition, but when it started giving the pressure over the nerve root, where patient is having very severe pain, in that case, patient has to undergo the surgery. Then let me explain about the causes of low back pain. If we can causes of low back pain, the first cause is acute lumbosacral strain. Let me, uh, before let me explain this, any one or two, please unmute and let me know I am audible to you all. Any one or two? Sir, audible. Um, yeah, thank you. Now, the causes of low back pain, if you consider the causes of low back pain, the first cause is the acute lumbosacral strain, then the second cause is unstable lumbosacral ligament. If we consider acute lumbosacral strain, it is very commonly seen in case of the person who sit and work in front of computer for longer duration or the person who does the repeated lumbar flexion motion. If we consider the second type, uh, the cause, the unstable lumbosacral ligament, which is very, very commonly seen in elderly individual or who does the vibratory tool work or who does the longer uh, standing or long sitting uh, work, job. Then the third cause, which is called as the back muscle weakness. Back muscle weakness, again, it is due to prolonged standing, prolonged sitting, or even I can say the obese individual back muscles are weakened. Then the fourth one is IVDP. What we have seen in the previous slide, I will explain. Then the fifth one is spinal stenosis. The spinal stenosis is the, it is not the acquired condition. It is the condition where the spinal canal space is reduced, right? That may, that may induce the low back pain. Then the next one is the osteoarthritis of the spine. This one, the unequal leg length, which is very commonly seen in any post fracture conditions, exclusively the femoral component fracture. 
Apart from that, any fracture at the pelvic region where there are chances of limb length discrepancy. Due to limb length discrepancy, there are chances of uh, low back pain. Because of the limb length discrepancy, the biomechanics of the spine or the vertebral column may change. Whenever there are chances of change in the biomechanics of the vertebral column, there are chances of more strain over the back, which in turn leads to the disc collapse, which in turn leads to very severe pain at their low back. Then the next class, which is called as the pelvic disorders, there are plenty. Apart from that, the retroperitoneal tumor, abdominal aneurysm, and psychosomatic problems, or even these problems which may induce the low back pain. Then last, the obesity and stress also induces back pain. Let me uh, move to the next slide. What are all the common clinical features we can see or we can say on the low back pain patients? The first feature is severe low back pain, right? Then the second one is it radiates down to the thigh, calf, and posterior side, right? The extension of the radiating pain depends on the quantum of the compression of the uh, nerve pathway at the higher level, at the lumbar medullary level. Then the third point is the pain increases during cough, sneeze, and laugh. As I already explained in the Valsalva maneuver, you do consider whenever we pop, sneeze, and laugh, there are chances of increased intra abdominal, intra thoracic pressure, which in turn pushes the pressure to the spinal canal. So, through that, the patient complains of pain. Then, the fourth point is the pain increased at the night time. Fifth one is Valsalva maneuver, already I've explained to you. Sixth one, pain increased during flexion of spine. Whenever we does the frequent flexion of the spine, there are chances of increase in the quantum of the pain as per the scale. Then the next point is the prolonged sitting, increased pain, then standing, then severe tenderness and muscle spasm with character spinal muscle, which is considered as the builder for the back. Then the next one is the tenderness on the spine, wherever the Feel the spinous processes, there will be the tenderness over the spine. Then the muscle weakness and decreased muscle endurance can be seen, and decreased deep tendon uh, reflex and the sensation can be seen in case of the low back pain patients. Next, let me speak about the causes of the pain. The first cause is the degenerative cause. The degenerative cause is very, very commonly seen in most of the individual. Uh, in the middle age of Indian population, and even you do consider worldwide population, where we can say the degenerative joint disease, which is considered as the spondylosis, right? And the spondylitis, which is due to the inflammation. Then the second cause, the main cause, is the instability. Right? Whenever there is the fracture, or whenever there is the fracture or cars interarticularis, where we can see the dorsal sign in the X-ray. Right, where we can say the spondylolisthesis, right? In this case, there will be a very severe pain. Then the third cause for the pain is the organic, which is due to the tumor or the infection. And the fourth one is the nerve compression or irritation, right? It is due to the root compression, right? The root compression, it is due to the disc prolapse or it is due to the entrapment neuropathy. If you consider the disc prolapse, though my topic is very particularly to the lumbar spine, so let me consider only the disc prolapse inducing a root compression. Then the last point, which is considered as rule out psychogenic cause, right? Rule out psychogenic cause where it is very rarely seen, and where these patients are uh, even they are directed to physiotherapy, where we have to do according to their. Uh, psychological depression or the anxiety level, we have to plan our treat. Then, what is the referred pain and how this referred pain, which uh, mimics like the uh, low back pain? If you consider the abdominal cavity, right in the abdominal cavity, the gastritis or the peptic ulcer, right? Even these patients, they used to give a complaint like they have very severe back pain. 
So the patient has to be ruled out by their directing the patient to the medical practitioner. Then the second thing is pancreatitis. Even the pancreatitis or the cholecystitis patient also complains of pain at the back where the lesion is in the visceral organ. So the patient can be directed for the medical assessment. Then the second uh, uh, individual, right, those who are having the uh, renal calculi or the urinary tract infection individual also uh, gives, uh, gives complaint of pain at their back. Even this individual should be directed for the ultrasound by the way of directing the patient to the physician. And the next, the pelvic cavity region, the third pain. Under that, the first condition, which is called as the ovarian cyst and area. Even this patients, they used to say, they have very severe back pain. So we should not get misleaded or misguided by the way of uh, doing our assessment. So whenever you do our maximum or the proper physiotherapy assessment, exclusively the orthopedic and neurological assessment of the back and the now, so we can uh, come to the conclusion and we can direct the patient towards the individual speciality people to do the real assessment on the patient. Then the next one is the iota, right? If we consider the aortic aneurysm also induces pain at their back, so the patient will be directed to the cardiologist to, to cardiologist for the further evaluation. So the referred pain, referred pain and the other uh, important terminology which is called as the radiating pain. If we consider the uh, low back pain patients, Few patients, they will have referred pain whenever they don't have any nerve involvement. Whereas they will complain of radiating pain whenever there is the absolute disc collapse, there is the collapse disc which is compressing the nerve pathway. So as a physio or the physiotherapist, we have to see whether the patient is having the visceral organ referred pain or the patient is having the absolute disc collapse referred pain. So we should be familiar doing our assessment. Based on our assessment, either we can continue with our treatment or if assessment fails, where we have to direct the patient towards the individual speciality people for further evaluation of the patient. Then the next type of the pain, which is called as the mechanical pain. If you consider the mechanical pain, the first one is the muscular strain, which is called as the uh, pain, right? The mechanical low back pain, where we can say the muscular, it is induced into the muscular strain. Then the second type of pain, which is called as the ligaments uh, strain induced mechanical pain. Then the third one is the facet joint arthritis induced mechanical pain. And the fourth one is the disco discogenic uh, pain induced mechanical pain. And the fifth one is instability. Already we explained you this spondylolysis and the other condition which is called as the spondylolysis. Now let us get into the diagnostic procedure. How we can do the diagnosis for the low back pain patients? Here you can see I've made the individual diagram of the individual diagnostic procedure. If you consider the diagnostic procedure, the first diagnostic procedure is the plain X-ray. I think uh, anyone you please unmute and let me know. You can see the cursor where I'm moving. Anyone? Anyone in the audience? Yes, sir. So now you can see the plain X-ray. The first diagnostic procedure is the simple plain X-ray. You can see the plain X-ray of lumbar vertebra, right? where the simple pain x-ray of anteroposterior view or the lateral view. Lateral view I have not put here because there is no space. I have, I have uh, included only the anteroposterior view, right? Then the next one is the MRI where we can see the second picture where there is the MRI where we can see the uh, uh, spine as well as we can see the this, the white color portion which is called as the disc, and here we can see the spinal part and the spinous processes, right? And we can see the space, right, where the dotted line which denotes 
how much the space reduction which is seen in between the discs. For that, they used to do the MRI and they used to do the uh, they used to do MRI to see the amount of the collapse. Then the third diagram, which is called as the CT, right? The computer tomography where we can see the lumbar vertebra and we can see the spinous processes and the other soft structure. Then the last uh, diagnostic procedure, the recent one, which is called as the discography. You can see the discography where they just uh, insert the uh, needle and they just see how much uh, this uh, problem which has happened, right? Whether the discal problem is in the center or in the periphery, right? They will see through the discograph. Then the next uh, thing, the next slide which speaks about the special test for the uh, low back pain patients. Yeah, I've, uh, we included the diagram, diagrammatic representation also along with the individual test. The first test, which is called as the straight leg raising. Straight leg raising, which starts from zero degree to 90 degree, but no need to take up to 90 degrees. But if you consider the most of the Indian population, they will be having the hamstring muscle tightness. So you cannot go up to 90 degrees, you can go up to 45 or 60 degrees, or at the maximum, you can go up to 75 degrees if hamstring permits you to go, right? This guides you about the nerve tension, this guides you about the uh, disc prolapse, this guides you about if there is any chance of SI joint strain. Then the second test, which is called as the lassitude test, here you can see the diagrammatic representation of the lassitude test, right, which is called as the lassitude sign or the regard sign, right, where the operator is doing the rotation and they are palpating the nerve pathway and they are doing the minimal dorsi flexion where they are feeling the pain or not. When the operator does such a movement, there will be a chance of the nerve tension, this increased nerve tension which induces the pain over the course of the nerve or the course of the nerve or the muscle supplied by the nerve. Then the third uh, physical test which is called as, the third physical test which is called as the cross SLR where we can see the cross SLR in the cross straight leg race, even this will guide us towards the uh, right the nerve tension. Then the fourth test, which is called as the Faber's test, which is very commonly done by all physios, even the interns and PGs, where it will guide us towards the SA John strain as well as the nerve tension. Then right? let me speak about the other special tests. The next test, which is called as the bow string. Most of the physios, we are not doing this test, even this test, which will show you or guide us towards the nerve tension, as well as we can feel the nerve when we are doing the bow string. Then the next very, very important test is done by most of the physio, which is called as the slump test. It contains the three segment or three component test. The first component, where the physio is directing the patient to perform the neck flexion, followed to that the thoracic flexion, followed to that the extension of the lower leg, the knee joint and the dorsal flexion of the foot. When we perform this test, it induces the tension over the now or the course of the now where patient feels or the patient gives a complaint of very severe pain over the now course, right? That shows the positive sign. Then the next test, which is called as the femoral nerve stretch test, where the person is performing, I've included the photographic representation, where we can see whether the femoral nerve also included or included or the femoral nerve also intact, right? Along with the sciatic nerve, right? To rule out that we are doing this test. Then the test which we used to perform is the compression and the distraction test. Right, even this test guide us towards the destiny about the patient problem. Then, now let me enter into the differential diagnosis of the lumbar spine and the conditions. The first condition, which is called as this first condition, which is called as the spondylosis, there is the diagrammatic representation of the spondylosis, right, where we can see 
the pain in hyperextension on lumbar spine whenever the patient performs the hyperextension there will be very severe pain and there will be the hamstring tightness with slr positive right there we can see the disc and the vertebra the fracture at the pars interarticularis we can see right exclusively the posterior part of the vertebra right this can be seen in case of spondylolysis then the second condition which is called as the spondylolisthesis how we can see the spondylolisthesis we can see the x ray finding right where the l5 which is moved forward on the s1 here you can see the l5 is moved off of its size i can say 50 percentage of l5 is moved right where we can see as an operator if you palpate on the back right we can see the step of sign right we can see and we can see there will be the absolute 50 percentage of the movement of the vertebra over the other vertebra which induces the compression of the nerve pathway right so it induces the sensory deficit then this type of the spondylolisthesis are very commonly seen on individual who fall from height right mainly it is exclusively seen on the patient who climb the palm tree right or the patient who climb on the coconut tree right or the patient who does the diving on the swimming pool right and land on lands on their buttock right on that case there are chances of this apart from this is the force is too huge or the height is too heavy right more than 10 feet 15 feet in that case there are chances of the bursting of vertebra or the vertebral fracture the upper. If we consider the second type of the uh, condition, which is called as the spondylolisthesis, right, where here in this diagram, I've taken the 50 percentage of the movement, which is nothing but the grade two spondylolisthesis, up to this grade is managed by us, the physiotherapist. Once the condition is switched over to grade three or two, that is, the patient is directed for the surgical procedure, right? And here, uh, the X-ray finding also guide us towards the spondylolisthesis, where we can see the spotty dog ear sign, which is nothing but already I have shown you here the fracture of pars interarticularis on the spondylolysis diagram. Then the third condition on the differential diagnosis, which is called as the lumbar spondylosis, which is very commonly treated by the physio. Right here, you can see the third condition where in the third condition, we can see the decreased range of motion, right? We can see the pain on the movement. Why there is the decreased uh, range of motion? It is due to the degenerative changes over the spine and the intervertebral disc. Then the next uh, a condition which comes under the differential diagnosis is the spinal stenosis where we can see the picture where there will be the loss of laudosis, pain relieved by forward bending and sitting and lying, alternate or abnormal SLR can be seen on this case, passive extension reproduce the symptom. There will be more pain whenever we do the passive extension. And there will be the intermittent claudication, the leg pain, numbness increased while walking and while standing also on few cases. Then the next condition, which is called as the parts disease, it is nothing but the TB bone of the lumbar vertebra, right? And this is seen on uh, the diagnosed by the uh, physician as a tuberculosis TB bone. So, those individuals are very prone. You can see the diagrammatic representation of the TB bone or the TB vertebra. And here we can see the intermittent claudication, fold abscess, and the stiff spine and are very, very commonly seen on this case. Yeah. On the next slide, the spinal tumor. Here I've included the diagrammatic representation of the spinal tumor. You can see the tumor, the length of the tumor, right, which is seen on the MRI, right? And you can see there will be what are all the features of the spinal tumor. If you consider the first feature is the nocturnal pain and sleep disturbance, 
Sleep disturbance mainly at the night time can be seen due to the internal pathology. Then there will be the continuous pain and there will be elevated uh, ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate and tuberculosis, there are chances of possible anemia and the bony erosion also can be seen. Then the next condition under differential diagnosis is the lumbar fracture, right? Already I have explained you about the uh, uh, diving, diving from the diving on the swimming pool from very high or the person who climbed the palm tree or coconut tree, right? Fall from the height more than 10 feet or 20 feet landing on their button, right? Where there are chances of fracture of the lumbar vertebra, right? You can see the fracture of the lumbar vertebra, right? So, which induces the paraplegia, right? So, the type of the paraplegia or uh, it is uh, depends on either the human or element type of the lesion. It depends on the amount of the spinal cord and the spinal nerves which are involved, right? Then the plain x-ray which will guide us about the fracture vertebra, but to know the spinal cord problem, how much spinal cord is involved, how much spinal nerves are affected, we have to direct the patient for see MRI uh, for spinal diagnosis. Then the other condition which is very commonly uh, is the piriformis syndrome, right? As a physio, we, we are seeing on everyday webinar, right? Py piriformis syndrome has its vital role because most of the physios are treating piriformis syndrome as a dysphalance, right? So here we can see the piriformis syndrome, the diagrammatic representation, and here you can see the pain which is there at the gluteal region and back of the thigh, right, which resembles like the sciatica. And here, there is no lumbar pain. There won't be any pain at the lumbar region, exclusively in pyriformis syndrome. Then whenever we does the pyriformis muscle stretch, right, there will be a very severe pain complained by the uh, patient. So through that, we can make the differential diagnosis of pyriformis syndrome from intervertebral disc collapse. Then the other differential diagnostic conditions, which is almost like the low back pain or the SI joint lesion, right where we can see the irregularity of SI joint or the region is sclerosis, right? Apart from uh, sclerosis, right? There will be a very severe pain which resembles like the low back pain, right? And these patients are diagnosed by the Faber's test here the fibrous, fibrous test will become positive and exclusively the compression and distraction test also will be positive, mainly in case of SA joint lesion. Then here the patient complains of pain at the LS region, some lumbocytral region, pain at the buttock, groin and the thigh region. Then the next condition <clears throat> under the differential diagnosis is the low back strain. If you consider the low back strain, it is nothing but the mechanical low back pain, right where we can see the tenderness over the paraspinous, uh, paraspinous muscle. Then the symptoms on flexion of 70 degrees, right, there will be a very severe pain, patient cannot be able to do beyond that. And there won't be any neurological symptoms on low back strain cases. At last, if you consider hip pathology, also resembles like the low back pain where there will be the referred pain. There won't be any radiating pain and even this condition can be differentiated by the way of the Faber's test. And here in this case the SLR will become negative whereas the SLR will become positive in case of intervertebral dysphalas condition. And there is no lumbar spine pain in the pathology condition. This is all the way how we can make the different diagnosis uh, on different condition from the disc collapse case. Then, <coughs> how we can manage the low back pain patient? If we consider the management, management is categorized into three main directions. The first one is the risk, the second one is the reduction, and the third one is the renewal. If we consider the risk, what all the subcontent or the 
what all the points we have to consider under the risk. The first and the best treatment for the low back pain patient is the bed rest. Right, always you should direct the patient to go for the bed rest minimum one or two weeks whenever they have very severe pain. Then the second treatment which is there on low back pain during the bed rest time is the bedside traction. Right, the bedside traction, which is considered as the mechanical traction, either you can give the bedside mechanical traction, instead of that, you can give the uh, skin traction also to reduce the pain. Then the third uh, point under the risk period is NSAIDs. NSAIDs are prescribed by the orthopedic surgeons or the physician. Along with NSAIDs, is there is any pathology, the antibiotics and muscle relaxants are prescribed. Then the fourth point under the wrist is resting or giving rest or stabilizing the spine in a proper position is done by the spinal person. Right. Apart from that, under the risk, the last important point is reduce activity. Reduce activity in sense here, I mean to say the normal activity of daily living, right? Even sitting, standing, walking, right? Or turning, or turning towards any other side, or tilting, anything, any activity should be reduced, right? So that will give the absolute risk to the spine or the spinal column. This will help to reduce the pain in case of uh, low back pain patients. Then the second point under this heading is the reduction. What is the meaning of reduction? <coughs> reduction means reducing the pain as well as reducing the individual person's activity. Right? If you consider the first point under reduction is the continuous bed rest. Right? Again, what we have discussed in the previous slide. Then the second point is the traction for minimum two weeks. It is advisable, right? And whenever they offer the traction, they will see the traction can be given as an either mechanical or the skin traction. The traction can be given bed in a neutral position or the leg end of the bed is elevated position, right? Whenever the leg end of the bed is elevated, then the weight offered to the traction force should be to not exceed more than two to three kilograms. Whereas, if the leg end is kept in a flattened position, where we can increase the weight up to 6 to 8 kilograms, it depends on the patient's body weight. Then, at last, the epidural injections done by the orthopedic surgeon. Then, the third point under, uh, for, under the treatment, which is called as removal, indication for uh, disc removal. When the disc can be removed by the orthopedic surgeon, if you consider Whenever there is the cardioecumenal lesion, where the lesion is compressing the spinal canal or the spinal nerves, right? In that case, the disc can be removed. And if there is any neurological deficit, right? When there is, when there will be the deficit, and there are chances of the uh, extruded disc, which is coupled, right? In that case, where patient cannot tolerate the pain, where there will be the very severe burning pain over the foot region right in that case the patient is ready for the surgery because already the alarming sign of the burning as well as the numbness to have been started on their feet then the third point which is called as the persistent pain and signs of now tension and the fourth point is very severe disc products in that case the patient is directed for the disc removal then the next point for uh, the disc removal, if you consider the disc removal, which are all the other types of surgeries they do, right? So for that, the first uh, type of surgery for the low back patient, low back pain patient are considered as the lactate. If you consider the first diagram, right there, they have shown the removal of the lamina, the part of the lamina, which is called as the partial remove the entire whole part of the lamina which is called as the complete laminectomy or the total laminectomy right so here the one side of lamina and ligament of are removed which releases the nerve tension right that is for that purpose the surgeon is performing the laminectomy then the second type of surgery which is called as the discectomy 
discectomy can be partial or total. We can see the diagram, right? So it depends on the quantum of the extrusion or the quantum of the sequestration, right? Based on that, they do the partial or the total discectomy. The third type of this is there in the market, in today's market, in surgeon's market, it is very, very commonly seen, right? Because most of the patients, they don't want much of blood loss, right? During surgery, that micro discectomy, right? This micro discectomy can be done through either the in or the metano or the p surgery, right? They are doing this, right? They are doing with the posterior approach, right? It is done by the scope to remove the herniated disc. Here you can see the part of the disc which got herniated and which start compressing the nerve pathway is removed by the surgeon, right, through the micro procedure. Then the other uh, surgical procedure which was called as the percutaneous discectomy, <coughs> the percutaneous discectomy, right, which is the recent advanced surgery where uh, they are doing of the this, the excluded this, they're just aspirating through the needle, right? Then the open surgery, which is, you can see the spine which are fused and the disc which are removed. You can see the X-ray film, right? Which is denoting or showing the uh, screws and the uh, stabilizing uh, uh, rod over the disc. Then the last surgery, which is, uh, very uncommonly done, right, of these patients or the decompression, right, nowadays, the various, if you go uh, uh, one or two decades before, these two surgeries were very, very familiar, the spinal fusion and the decompression, but nowadays, due to the advancement in the science, right, they are going for the percutaneous discectomy or the micro discectomy surgeries. Now, let me get into the physiotherapy treatment, right? What is the uh, physiotherapy treatment? What all the physiotherapy treatment we can do, right? If we consider the physiotherapy treatment, which is considered as the conservative treatment for the low back pain patients, the first physiotherapy treatment, which is called as the electrotherapy, then the next one is the exercise therapy, third one is the manual therapy, fourth one is the massage therapy, fifth one is myofacial release, and the sixth one is the dry needle therapy or the dry needle technique. If you consider the myofacial release, right, these two are the uh, advanced treatment which is there in the physiotherapy market today. That is why I've included the diagrammatic representation here, right, the myofacial release to the erector spinal muscle, right, and the entire back muscle will be done in this direction. And you can see the dry needle technique <coughs> there. It is banned in few countries in the world, but still it is there in the market where we can see the needles over the erector spinae muscle and they do the dry needle to reduce the pain. Now let us get into the uh, normal electrotherapy treatment which we used to give in our department, right, which is called as the intermittent and continuous pelvic traction. Right, in which case we can give intermittent, or in which case we can give the continuous traction. If you consider the intermittent, where there won't be much radiating pain, right, in that case, there is the back pain, but there is no much radiating pain. In that case, we give the intermittent pelvic traction, whereas the continuous pelvic traction can be given with the help of, <coughs> with the, help of the electronic or the mechanical or the bedside traction. Right, so this can be given exclusively whenever there is the maximal disc protrusion or the excluded case where the protruded or excluded disc which is compressing the nerve pathway and the patient is complaining of the radiating pain. Then the next country, next treatment modality which is very commonly given, which are considered as the interferential therapy. Right, interferential therapy can be given as a two electrode, four electrode and four electrode vector. What is the meaning of this? Either to two electrode or four electrode. If you consider four electrode, in the four electrode, the four electrode 45 is there and four electrode 90 is there. What is the meaning of this? Four electrode 90, right? 
to cover the maximum region, four electrode 45 to cover the smaller region. And at last, the last point, which is considered as the four electrode vector. What is the meaning of this? The four electrode vector, where the physiotherapist is giving our responsibility to the machine to take care of the patient, where the physiotherapist could not find or locate the pain. Right in that case, the machine will locate the pain and it will treat the patient problem. Then the third treatment technique which are given for back pain, which is considered as the continuous or pulse ultrasound therapy, right? The pulse ultrasound therapy for the acute stage of the condition where we can give 0.5 to 0.8 watts per centimeter square for acute, 0.8 to 1.2 watts per centimeter square for subacute, and 1.5 to 2 watts per centimeter square for chronic patients. If we consider the acute patient, acute patient will be given three to four minutes of treatment. Subacute is given four to six minutes and chronic patients are given six to eight minutes of treatment with direct contact technique. Then the continuous mode of ultrasound will be given only for the chronic patients try to suffering for a longer duration. Then the next treatment for the back pain which is considered as the short diatherme, which is very commonly given by all physios, then the microwave diatherme, these two modalities which comes under the microwave along with the <coughs> ultrasound or the treatment. Then, very rarely we are giving the moisture pack and the back. Then, as the uh, recent trend, for treating the back pain patient, which is considered as the cupping therapy. You can see the cupping therapy, right, where the cups are fixed, where there will be the vacuum or induced, right, which gives the continuous pull over the muscle, which in turn increases the blood flow to the region and which in turn relaxes the muscle. Through that, the patient is getting pain relief. Okay. What is the what the next treatment protocol for the back pain patient is the exercise therapy, right? While the uh, which are all the muscles we are mainly concentrating for giving exercise therapy are the erector spinae muscle and the external oblique muscle, then the multifidus muscle, the transverse abdominals, <coughs> then the core muscles, right? Anterior and posterior, right? And I have shown the uh, cam cam exercises where there will be the absolute pelvic movement and I have shown at the King Cobra Pusher exercises. Right? So, what we are doing by the giving exercises, right? By the giving exercises, we are strengthening all these muscles, right? And we are inducing the more strength to the core muscles, right? Which induces more stability to the cerebral column. Right through that, the patient will be uh, free from the pain. So, for that, what are all the exercises we can do? The first exercise, which is called as the erector spinae muscle exercise, right, which is nothing the vacancy extension. Exercises, extension exercises, already explained you. Then the cat and camel exercises to maintain the core muscle again. Then the king cobra pusher exercises to induce, uh, to strengthen the erector spinae muscle. Then, what is the advancement for treating the uh, back pain patient? If you consider the advanced treatment, right, we are going towards the manual therapy. We are not depending or we are not uh, using much of the machineries. Whereas if you go back a three decade, right, when we were student, those days there are not much of manual therapy, right, where uh, which was used by our teachers and even by us, right. Those days we were totally depending on the machineries. But nowadays since these two decades, the manual therapy has become very familiar and it gives a good result on the back pain patients, right? And here, the first technique which is used to reduce the back pain is the Maitland mobilization, 
the grades according to the severity of the patient should be given, and none of the manual therapy should be given in any post operative conditions. You should not give. Then the second uh, technique, which is called as the CDAX technique, where they, they used to do the minimal stretch and they do the mobilization of the spine. And the third technique, which is called as the vacancy technique, where they instruct the patient to do the forward bending in the extension, the knee to the chest, then the tilting of the spine, then the cobra position, right? The, uh, to strengthen the erector spine and muscle. Then the fourth technique, which is called as the mulligan technique, they perform the technique in the form of the mulligan belt, right? By the way of reaching the other region, they will strengthen the back muscle. Such a way they do the therapy. Then the third treatment technique for the, the patient, which is called as the massage manipulation, right? Or doing the massage manipulation, the patient position and the bullet focus position is very, very important. Right, for doing back massage, the patient position is patient should lie on their abdomen. It is so they've got the prone line. Then the operator position, the physiotherapist position is either the stride standing or the walk standing position. If you consider what all the technique we have to do for giving the back massage, the first one is the stroking. Stroking is followed by the epurage. Stroking can be given either the home stroking or the light stroking. Right to trigger or to stimulate the sensory nerve endings as well as trigger the muscle. Right. <coughs> then the next technique, which is called as the Palmer kneading technique. Palmer kneading technique is given to the whole back, followed by the fleurage. Then the hacking technique. Hacking technique can be given to the muscular part. Right. The bony part should be avoided. We should not perform. So it is considered as the powerful technique. It induces directly the nerve endings, followed by a plurage. Then the friction technique can be given in between the spine or the spinous processes, right, to maintain the spine mobility, right, and this friction which will help to break the adhesions in between the vertebral column. Then, what all the assistive devices we can give, right? If you consider the assistive devices for the low back patient. Low back pain patient, the first assistive device is LS belt, where the LS belt which is starting from T10 and which is extending till the uh, S1 or uh, till the tailbone, right? And this is called as the lumbar car set to show the extension of the belt. I have taken this diagram. Then the third technique, which is there in the market, this is making a big <coughs> business today, the kinesio tape. Right, the kinesio taping technique, KT tape, KT tape can be given in the horizontal as well as the vertical direction, right, where they are concentrating the erector spinal muscle and they are concentrating the affected vertebrae. This taping can be given, or this taping can be renewed once in five days or once in three days. Then, the last and important thing, right, which we used to advice to the patient is the ergonomics, right? We are all suffering with the back pain. The first thing is the workstation, how the workstation should be, right? The workstation where the person who is sitting, right? Where they should view the laptop or where they view the, view the computer with 10 to 20 degrees. And while viewing, the person should maintain at least 45 to 70 centimeter distance. and you consider their chair, the chair should have minimum 35 to 50 centimeter and you can see whenever they are sitting on the chair, right, their back is absolutely supported, it is supported, you can see the arm, arm is supported on the arm rest and both the thighs are supported and you can see at last the foot is supported on the ground or the floor. Important, whenever the person works on the computer. Right, this is exclusively this ergonomic advice should be a professional or nowadays most of the profession are much computer oriented. So the person who is doing the computer job more than five or six hours in a day should follow this protocol to come out of the back pain. Then you consider the second diagram or the second picture which shows the standing position, right? In the standing position, how the line alignment of the line 
from the vertex right till the uh, ground or the floor, till the lateral value, how the line is passing that you could see, and how the upper limb will be supporting on the platform. That is very, very important. Then rest during the work. What is the meaning of rest during the work? They cannot stop working. They have to work and during work by every half hour or one hour, they should make at least 10 yards or 100 yards walk. Right? That relaxes their spine. Then at last, if we consider the back exercises, the back exercises can be either the McKenzie extension exercises, cat and camel exercises, or the Cobra push-up exercise, or you can say the Williams flexion exercises. Any exercises can be given to the lumbar stability as well as the lumbar mobility. So at last, what exercises can I do to strengthen my back? Right, you can see here the patient is performing the flexion of the knee, where the knee joint or the thigh, anterior aspect of the thigh, which is touching the chest region. And you can see it is unilateral, and here the patient is playing bilateral. Then the patient is performing the pelvic bridging, and the patient is performing the minimal rotational or the partial tool to strengthen the muscles. Now, at last, this is this is about my presentation for the differential diagnosis. Right now, any question? Thank you, one and all, for your patient listening. Any question from your side? Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, lucid presentation. Very much explanatory, more in detail. And uh, okay, we are happy uh, to attend your lecture and hope the uh, stakeholders who are attending this lecture really benefited out of this. And uh, we thank you very much, sir. Now we'll uh, ask Dr. Amrut for the questionnaire section. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good. Uh, so we have few questions in our chat box. Chat box. So I'll be going through few of them. Uh, the first one is a diagnostic importance of history of present illness for diagnosing low back pain. Uh, repeat it, madam. Uh, what is the diagnostic importance of history of present illness for diagnosing low back pain? Today we are concentrating on the low back pain. It's very, very important. That is what I have shown the differential diagnosis slides with the picture. If they go through that again, they will understand of the individual uh, diagnostic procedure. Right? In that, particularly physiotherapists should not be misguided by the visceral organ pain which is resembles like low back pain. If you consider the renal calculi patient, if you consider the other visceral organ, for example, even the aortic patient, right? We should not treat them as a uh, low back pain patient. So immediately the patient should be given uh, attention and patient should be directed towards the specialized attention. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, how to diagnose spinal tumors clinically is our second question. Yeah, spinal tumors clinically can be diagnosed with the help of Valsalva maneuver itself. While explaining the Valsalva maneuver, already I've explained to you people, right? Whenever we test the Valsalva maneuver, this is exclusive test to check is there is any visceral, uh, is there is any internal growth in this spinal canal, right? So, according to that, we can say uh, there will be the numbness to that particular myotome and dermatome, and there will be the tingling sensation. Through that, we can conclude there is there is the level at that particular level there are chances of some uh, growth inside. Apart from this Valsalva maneuver, we can direct the patient to go for the CT or MRI to rule out the absolute extension, the growth of the. Uh, in the growth of the tumor inside. Okay, thank you, sir. And uh, one of the last question is stiffness at L4, L5, and posterior superior iliac spine. Apart from doing strengthening exercises of core and back muscles, is it related with vitamin D and calcium deficiency? But nowadays, it has become a very good. Uh, 
a business by the orthopedic surgeon, right? But uh, if you consider the aging, right, made exclusively in female, right, who attain menopause, right, who is having a lot of uh, hormonal disturbance, or the female who is consuming uh, years together of uh, thyronol, more than 100 milligram, right? In that case, there are chances of vitamin D deficiency, but in general, it is not due to vitamin D deficiency because we are living in India, right? It is the hot country. Whereas if you consider the abroad, the foreign countries, right? Mainly the Western countries, the climate is too cold. So there are chances of vitamin D deficiency there. But in Indian population nowadays, due to the, uh, what to say, the upgradation of the software industry, right? The software individuals or the professionals are sitting inside the air conditioned room for hours together in a day. I can say 10 hours, 15 days in a day. They are not exposing their body into the sunlight. So in that case, there are chances of vitamin D deficiency, which is inducing the pain. But in general, if you do the proper assessment, we can conclude with the help of our <coughs> physical test itself. No need of CT or MRI. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you, Dr. Thank you, madam. Uh, we are very grateful to sir for this wonderful presentation and for uh, the beautiful question answer session as well. Uh, at this gesture, I would also like to express my gratitude uh, for the support and help from Dr. Suvarna Ganvir Madam, who is Maharashtra State Coordinator of Indian Association of Physiotherapists. Madam was to be here with us and she wanted to share her uh, views and express her gratitude. But because of some emergency, uh, she's not able to join with us and I shall read it out on her behalf what she wanted to express. Good afternoon all. The webinar series organized by Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences and IIP Women's Health was an academic feast for the learners. I, as a state coordinator, wholeheartedly express my gratitude towards Dr. G. Varadrajulu, Dean Krishna College of Physiotherapy, for taking this initiative and getting associated with IIP Women's Health Maharashtra. Looking forward for more such quality work in association with Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences and College of Physiotherapy. Thank you all the speakers for sharing their knowledge and sparing time for the noble cause. This is what Madam wanted to express. Uh, thank you so much, Madam, uh, for your valuable time and your gratitude towards us. I would now request Dr. G. Varadrajulu, sir, to express and deliver the vote of thanks. <laughs> Once again, very good evening, one and all. This webinar series is one of the historic event in the history of Maharashtra and Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences Deemed University. We have started this webinar series on 30th June 2020 on 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of July with a seven uh, lectures by a eminent source persons across the country. So, the highlights of this particular webinar Almost all the resource persons are heads of the institutions and directors of their respective centers and the people who are having more than 25 years, 20 years of the services in the respective discipline. So we are very happy and, and uh, we should be, I will be grateful to them to cont for contributing their knowledge in this particular platform. I once again Thanks, Dr. Sanjeev Kumar, sir, Dr. P. Kamal Nathan, sir, Dr. Snail Deshpande, madam, Dr. Signa Veta, madam, Dr. Rakesh Kumar Sinha, Dr. Saumi Sinha, Dr. Raja, sir, for the valuable contribution for the successful completion of this webinar series. My main intention is to bring all of you, those who are really uh, pioneers in the field, to come on one platform and deliver a lecture to the people who are in need of this kind of knowledge. I wholeheartedly thank all the resource persons who are heartily involved in this. The next thing is my sincere gratitude to the Indian Association of Physiotherapy, who are really supported us in the future. The Central CDC members, our own president, Dr. Sanjeev Jha, 
Dr. Anamalai sir, Dr. Dr. Reddy sir, and the Satara district, women's cell, especially Maras women's cell. Dr. Suvarna Ganvir madam, Snehal Peter madam, Uttra Mohan, Tia Karande madam, Nirali Sanvi, Ruchi Varshini madam, Action Lady, Pooja Kamli madam, again a journal head. So all these people are togetherly came and they joined with me uh, notion this kind of webinar. We whole lot last but not least, my own team who is though we belongs to Satara district. People Dr. Yadav, Dr. Kushu Bhatia, Pallavi Madam, they helped in many aspects. It is my duty to say, say my thanks to them. Once again, the technical team of the IAP, technical team of Krishna Institute of Medical Sciences University, who are really helped in this venture. Last but not least, all my staff who have taken the responsibility of every speaker and deliver uh, and, and had a very good contact. In fact, uh, the, some of the resource persons are very happy with you all, with your, uh, the, the way you discuss with them, the way you express your views. They were happy. I was really felt very happy. So thanks each and every one of you who are there to for who, who are witnessing the success of the success of this webinar series. Thank you all one and again once again. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thanks, madam. Thank you, Satara Women's Cell Thank you. Thank you so much, all the participants, for being with us for all this uh, seven webinars. We end our webinar and our webinar series. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.